and for three Sabbaths reasoned with them from the scriptures, explaining and demonstrating that the Christ had to suffer and rise again from the dead, and saying, This Jesus, whom I preach to you, is the Christ. Picking up the habit of going to and reasoning with others from the scriptures. Now we know from the outset that there are good habits and there are bad habits. There are some habits that you, if you engage in them consistently, that are bad habits, you'll be in a rut. Uh, there are some things that if you find yourself indulging in these things on a constant basis, you will find it not to be productive. But there are some habits that if you engage in them consistently, there is strength in your life. You are better off when you engage in certain daily practices, daily studying of the Word of God, daily meditating on God, and daily prayer to God, and daily devotion to God. That's a habit that we should develop. And so I, I believe this subject, I, I wanted to look up that word custom, because I believe that that's one of the reasons that I have this subject. And I looked up the word custom from the English dictionary, which means habit, tradition, ritual, norm, or routine. That's the English dictionary definition. And I'm not a Greek scholar. I know some of you who are in here, uh, Brother Jackson or, and Brother Clay and others, I, uh, even probably you, Brother Brigham. I'm not a Greek scholar, but I wanted to look up the Greek word for custom as well, which is a, a cognated word, which means from ethos. It's a word that means behavior based on tradition or custom, doing what one is accustomed to do, i.e. on the basis of habit or tradition. Even we see in Scripture how that in Matthew chapter 27 and verse number 15, there was a custom that uh, the, the, the feast, the governor would release one. And at the feast of the governor, the Bible says, he was accustomed to releasing of the multitude one prisoner whom they wished. Matthew 27 and verse 15. And also in Luke chapter 4, and verse 16, there was a custom that Jesus engaged in, how that when he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he stood up to read. Uh, so this was the, the practice that Jesus was accustomed to going into the synagogue and to read the word of God. That's a good custom. That's a good practice. And there are some who are now saying, well, uh, we don't need to teach anything that's based on a tradition. We just need to teach doctrine. But I, even I read that the Bible speaks about there are some traditions them some things that were passed down that are godly. I'm not talking about something that is liberty issue, but I'm saying something that is doctrinal that has been passed down is something we should be accustomed and this tradition, we should keep these things. We should keep worshiping every first day of the week. We should keep taking the Lord's Supper. We should keep singing praises to God and having prayer. These are things that have been passed down we should keep. Not because a man just taught us something and we just went with what he taught, but if it's something that we can find in the word of God, we should keep it. And Jesus was accustomed to going into the synagogue and reading from the word of God. And now in Acts chapter 17, Paul is going as his practice is to teach the Jews. He is going as his custom is to teach God's word. Now we want to see something here because he did not go into the synagogue to be indoctrinated or entertained. Paul had a purpose for why he was going into the synagogue. There are some who say, well, we want to grow the church. 
So we need to go into these places of worship where they have false doctrine. And, and we should go into these places, maybe on a Sunday, we worship where we worship, and then we take our worship. And so then, well, let's go over to that place after we worship. And then some say, well, if somebody asks you to go to this place of worship, you can trade with them. And like, well, you come with me, and I'll go with you, and we can kind of trade off and see, you know, how we can, you know, try to, ease it in on you but some of us if we go in some of these places of worship we might get carried away with what they're doing and we might get swayed away by what they're doing Paul was a mature apostle and he knew what his reason was he had a purpose to preach because he knew that that's where the people were he knew that in Acts 13 and 14 the Bible says, when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch and Pisidia and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. See, they were going to teach the word of God. And the Bible says that after the reading of the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent to them, saying, Men and brethren, if you have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. Then Paul stood up. And motioning with his hand said, Men of Israel and you who fear God, listen. The God of this people, Israel, chose our fathers and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt. And with an uplifted arm, he brought them out of it. So Paul was teaching them things and there would be others who would believe based on what he taught. Then in Acts 14, they went to Iconium to a synagogue of the Jews, Acts 14 and 1. And I have a habit of talking fast, so that, that, that's more time I need, too, because i got to slow down and help, you know, people got to catch up with me. So I need about five more minutes just in case that uh, they, uh, you know, I talk, you know, so. Now, it happened in Iconium, verse 1 of Acts 14, that they went together to the synagogue of the Jews and so spoke that a great multitude, both of the Jews and the Greeks, believed. But the unbelieving Jews, and all throughout Acts, we see the apostles teaching and preaching, but there were some who would always stir up the division and dissension. People would believe, they would hear about Jesus, they would accept the gospel, but there were some who would teach against what they taught, and there would be some who should have knew the Messiah was coming, who were waiting on him, but yet they would stir up division. And that tells me something. When we teach people, we can't be afraid of that they're going to stir up division. They're going to talk about us. They're going to lie on us. But they gotta, we have to teach the word boldly, whether they want to hear it or not hear it. And they stirred up you know, all through Acts. You see in Acts 8 all the way through Acts 20 that all this time they were stirring up division. Now, Brother Albert, I believe I'm going to dip my spoon in some of these other preachers' bowl. <laughs> I'm going to take some of their scriptures. <laughs> you know, we all brethren in Christ, so I'm going to dip my spoon in their bowl a little bit because I know that's some of these texts. But we see this pattern that takes place. The apostles are going to teach the gospel and trying to get men and women to hear and believe, but the unbelieving Jews stir up dissension. The unbelieving Jews stir up division. And then now, and this amazed me when I read this in Acts 14 in preparation for this lesson, that there were some who were siding with the Jews and the city was divided, and there were some that siding with the apostles. You had the apostles teaching Jesus, teaching the cross, teaching the truth, and yet there were people that were divided in the city, and one was on one side. There was camps on each side. And the truth was being taught by men of God. And I wonder, we say, well, I'm teaching God's word. I'm living for God, and yet there are people that are against me. But that's going to happen. See, the scope of Paul's teaching was to prove that Jesus is the Christ. Right. His purpose was to prove that Christ suffered for us, that he must be risen again. We are to preach concerning Jesus, that he is the Christ, that men may be saved by him. See, the unbelieving Jews were angry because the apostles preached to the Gentiles. But it was strange how that these men should grudge others against the, pr the privileges that they wouldn't accept. 
See, we have to beware of men who will teach against what we believe. Because Paul's purpose in teaching the gospel was because that's where the greatest concentration of the Jews was. And God's message was spoken first to, should be to them. Turn to Romans chapter 1, verse 14 through verse number 16. Romans chapter 1, verse 14 through verse 16. I am a debtor, Paul says, to the church of Christ at Rome, both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God to salvation to everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it, or the King James has, for therein the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. See, the apostles' sole intention frequenting the synagogue was to preach the gospel. Right. And today there's some who had this mixed up. They believe we ought to worship on the Sabbath. Come on, brother. They believe we ought to take the Lord's Supper on the Sabbath. Come on, but Colossians chapter 2 says that the Sabbath has been done away, that worship and that, that's been done away. We don't, we're not going to take the Lord's Supper on the Sabbath. We're not going to worship on the Sabbath. But their purpose was to preach about a Savior who came from glory, who gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me and save a wretch like you. That was their purpose was to preach about Jesus Christ. And they were to preach their convictions about the crucified Christ. They were not there to tickle the people's ears. They were not there to make them feel good. They were not there to give them a prosperity message or a love story, but to preach the gospel. And men and women, notice even in Acts 17, if you would please, the Bible says, then Paul, as his custom was, went in to them. And for three Sabbaths, reasoned with them from the scriptures, explaining and demonstrating that the Christ had to suffer and rise again from the dead, and saying, this Jesus, whom I preach to you, is the Christ. And some of them were persuaded, and a great multitude of the devout Greeks, and not a few of the leading women, joined Paul and Silas. But the Jews who were not persuaded, becoming envious, took some of the evil men from the marketplace and gathering a mob, set all the city in an uproar and attacked the house of Jason and sought to bring them out to the people. But when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some of the brethren to the rulers of the city, crying out, these who have turned the world upside down have come here too. See, that's what people need to be saying about us. They need to be saying about these, whether they're in Glen Heights, whether they're in Sunnyside, whether they're in Alvin, whether they're in Sugar Land, whether they're in Fifth Ward, these who are turning the world upside down, they're telling people about Jesus, they're disrupting our money, they're messing up things because they're telling us people about Jesus. He said they've turned the world upside down because they're telling us about Jesus. The Bible says Jason has harbored them, and these are all acting contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying there is another king, Jesus. And they troubled the crowd and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. So when they had taken security from Jason and the rest, they let them go. Then the brethren immediately, verse 10, sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. When they arrived, they went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble or fair-minded than those in Thessalonica, and that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. See, they're teaching the gospel. But those who they were teaching were not as receptive as they should have been. Amen. 
They were pouring out themselves. But yet that didn't stop them from preaching. Now my subject is picking up the habit of, and let me read it again, it's a long subject. Picking up the habit of going to and reasoning with others from the scriptures. How do we develop the habit of telling men and women about Jesus? How do we develop the practice, the ritual, the norm of telling other men and women about Jesus? Because that's, you know, when you have a habit, it's something you're accustomed to. As I said, there's good habits and there are bad habits. See, if you're not accustomed to going to the gym, you're not going to develop the strength and develop the, the, the things that people want in the world, the strong arms and the strong chest and things like that. If you're just accustomed to sitting on the couch and eating chips and uh, Kool-Aid every day and sitting in front of the TV for hours upon hours upon end, it's going to be hard for you then to say, to next day I'm going to start every day running and I'm going to start every day running on the track because you're not accustomed to doing it. I'm not picking on anybody, but I'm just saying that if you're not accustomed <laughs> to doing anything, you know, if you're not, if it's not your practice or settled practice to do certain things, you won't make it a habit because it's not your practice. So I believe there are a couple of things that will help us develop the habit of getting out of our comfort zone. We've got to go outside of our local buildings. Ten minutes on. We've got to go outside of our local buildings. If we were to develop the habit, you know, in this lesson, and I'm, I don't believe in preaching at people, and I don't believe in just preaching at, at you, and I didn't get something out of it, because this was a challenging lesson to me. Because there are men and women that are dying in false religion. And there are people that we come across every day on our job, uh, in the grocery store, uh, at the ball game, in, at the mall. And, and we, we, we come across people all the time. And yet, a lot of times we don't say a word about Jesus. And we become insulated because we come every week, we take the Lord's Supper, we, we give of our means, we pray, we sing songs, and, and we come to Bible class and we hear a word from God and we get all of this stuffing in, but sometimes it doesn't go out. We get all of this good feeding and we get encouraged, but then we think, oh, all of this is just for me. And we have people that come to service and they say, I want to hear a message and I want to feel good and, and I want to be uplifted. But yet, I don't tell people about Jesus. And when we're in these local, but see, the work of the church is outside these four walls. If we're going to develop the habit, see, they went out where the people were. Now, I'm not talking about bartering with people. You come with me, I go with you. I'm not talking about, well, I'll come over there on Wednesday night, and I won't worship where I am on Wednesday night. I'll come over there. I'm not talking about that. But we have to go where the people are. And if the people are not coming to us, we need to go to them. If the people are not, you know, if they are not, and I'm, if they are, we're just putting a sign that has meeting outside and whatever, and if they are not coming, we have to go spread the God. We have to go and knock on some doors and go and walk in some neighborhood, go and feed some people. We've got to go where they are and not get comfortable inside of our four walls. We're going to have to develop the heart of Jesus. Matthew chapter 9. Verse 35. I'm hurrying, brother Brian. I'm hurrying, I'm hurrying, I'm hurrying. Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them, because they were weary and scattered like sheep, 
having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Now, I might say something. I don't know if it's going to offend anybody. But sometimes we read the scripture and we think, Lord, we need to pray for more people to come into. We need to pray for more people to go knock on doors. We need to pray for some more Bible teachers and some more, some strong brothers. And we need to pray. We need some more new people to come in so we can really get to growing and get the work going. But God is talking to us. God is directing. He's saying that you are the hands that he wants to have. You are the feet. If it's, Jesus has any feet, it's your feet. If any hands he has, it's your hands. Any mouth he has, it's your mouth. If you don't have, even if you don't have a pulpit to preach in every week, even if you don't have a place to go every week, but you are the ones who can tell people about Jesus. And Jesus had compassion for the lost. And I believe after a while, you'll give the five minute sign in a second, I'm sure. But uh, it's not that we don't love people. But I believe after a while, if we, are, if we are always doing the same thing and we're never engaged in any kind of evangelism, we just get numb to telling people about Jesus. We don't even, we don't even see people. We don't see humans. We don't see souls. We just become, we just meeting and greeting and coming amongst each other. But Jesus was moved with compassion for the people. And that's what's going to help us pick up the habit of going to and reasoning with others from the scripture. You know, I know we, we believe the scripture in Isaiah when he said, let us reason together. When Isaiah talked about how that their sins were as, were as, were as scarlet and they had all kinds of sin, and, uh, but he said that if you would reason, if you'll come back to me and, and understand what I'm teaching, then you'll be white as snow. We've got to go into the synagogue, not into the synagogue, but we, we got to go into the malls. That's where the people are. We've got to go into the grocery stores. We've got to go into the, the community centers. We have to go where the people are and every day look for opportunities to share Jesus. Every day look for, whether it's a business card that you have, whether it's a track that you have, or whether it's just a word, a smile, we have to look for opportunities Amen. to tell people about Jesus. And, I, and, and I'm challenged by this because I know that there is more that I can do and I know that there's more than we can do to tell people about Jesus. And even if people reject what you are saying, you know, in, in Acts and I'm dipping my, my spoon in the bowl again, but in Acts, they, they, were, they were all they were persecuted and they were all harassed and they were all around and they were all scattered. And they could have said, woe is me. We're persecuted and we're beat down. We're low. We're, we have no numbers. But yet what happens is they stood up and they got some strength and they went everywhere preaching the word. And the church was growing in the book of Acts. The church was moving because they were developing the habit. They weren't scared of the world. They weren't scared of what people were teaching, but they were going about reasoning with others from the scriptures. And if we develop that habit, we're going to be stronger in the world that has so many lost souls will be a much better place when we, when we continue to develop the habit of reasoning with others according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, Paul says that I'm not ashamed, or Paul says that moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel, which I preach to you, which also you received, and where you stand, but which also you are saved, if you hold fast that word which I preach to you, unless you believe in vain, for I deliver to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. May God bless you.
May God keep you. And we thank you for being Amen. a very good and patient audience. Amen. Amen. Two minutes, huh? Hey, I'm running this. <laughs> we done had some good preaching this morning. Y'all stand up for about, for about 30 seconds and stretch your limbs. I know some of you are a little more aged. <laughs>